this day-long event is, a, is in, in essence, a progress report, a, a group think on the work of the Columbia Center for New Media Teaching and Learning in partnership with the Columbia faculty. We seek to improve and, en and enrich the educational experience of our students at Columbia through appropriate applications of technology in combination with pedagogical innovation. I am told that over 250 individuals from Columbia and from the regional higher education community have registered for this event. And I am thankful that so many of you have chosen to attend dutifully these often habitual and trite opening remarks. I am the ceremonial administrator, the cheerleader who's been trotted out for this event. You will be exposed today to, I think, extraordinary new tools, uh, the products of rich teacher-technologist collaboration, and to developing national planning around course management systems and learning systems. But allow me to, at the outset of this conference, suggest briefly some what I'll call meta-issues, some essential imperatives that I hope we can keep in our minds as we work through the day. Universities must build the network, the essential infrastructure that we have to have across this university and across the higher education community around the world, and it must be characterized by high levels of connectivity, reliability, capacity, performance, security, to allow the new applications, the robust multimedia, interactive, and distributed activities that we are talking about today. We will not be successful in our teaching and learning innovation unless we provide ongoing attention to the network. The Academy must also participate in our efforts to manage identity and security. We're exposed daily in newspapers and television to the intensity of the threat. We must be worried about network efficiency, the maintenance of our system operations, data integrity and protection, issues of identity theft. The challenge is to protect our resources in ways that are responsive to academic cultures. And that, I think, is fundamental to our thinking about the future of our teaching and learning systems. We must enhance and organize ourselves to be prepared for disaster and to provide for continuity. This is not only business continuity and business recovery, but this means tools for redundancy, effective policies and process, clear assignment of responsibilities, and a, a rigor of our, of our of auditing procedures for records management. We're building capacities, we're building knowledge, we're building content that needs to be preserved. Most of our academic institutions are grossly underprepared. Universities must build the digital library. The digital library is an integral and fundamental part of the teaching and learning systems that we are developing. Quality no longer just equals content. Quality equals content plus functionality. It's not just being able to access the information, it's being able to use it and use it in new and innovative ways on new platforms and new technologies. We must preserve and archive the content. We must build archives as repositories to hold the information that our faculty and our technologists create. We need to be sure that it's persistent and it's accessible over time. We must curate it, we must secure it, and we must see ourselves as stewards who care and migrate this content and this technology forward. Clearly, we're converting a lot of analog information into digital, but we're increasingly de dealing with born digital content and tools, and we are grossly underprepared to make sure that future generations of students and faculty will have access to what we are creating. We must look at these processes and tools and content that we're talking about today as ways to enhance the student experience. We know that our students want technology ubiquity. They want as much web-based service as we can provide. They want us to create technology sandboxes. They want privacy space. They want rigorous and constant support services. 
They want to be information fluent. And when they leave our colleges and universities, they want postgraduate access to what we've created as alum of this institution. We must find better ways to collaboratively, across higher education, develop, support, and I would argue own the course management systems and teaching and learning systems that we are creating. Our systems must enable content creation, storage and management of learning materials, much more sophisticated search and query techniques, distribution and access, and ability to work through what I think is one of our toughest issues, rights management. We must integrate technology and electronic resources purposefully into teaching and learning and, land and plan for faculty involvement and incentives. What we do through the center must enhance the faculty experience. If we listen to our faculty, they tell us what they value. They want personal advancement and recognition. They want to make contributions to the scholarly literature. They want high quality instructional experiences. They want their students to be successful. They want to work on innovative projects. They want to collaborate with interesting colleagues. They want some recognition and remuneration for their work. And they want opportunities to experiment with technology. The work of the center is plugged in to many, many of those things which our faculties value. But as we move forward, I think it's very important to remember what Clark Kerr, the former chancellor of the University of California once said that a faculty is a group of individual entrepreneurs held together by a common concern over parking. That, that individual role that faculty play in our institutions needs to be respected and embraced. We must, through our teaching and learning work, advance the open revolution. Listen to the vocabulary, the rhetoric of the university open source, open standards, open archives, open design, open courseware, open knowledge, open access, barrier-free access, increasingly challenged by economics, by technology, by laws and legislation, and by our own behaviors. We must advocate the information policy agenda. Things going on in Albany, in Washington, and in key world capitals are undermining things that we value. Intellectual freedom, privacy, civil liberties, funding for education and research programs are threatened. Internet development and telecommunications policy increasingly favors the for-profit community. Access to government information is being eroded. We must monitor, we must educate, we must advocate, and we must implement a much more rigorous role for Columbia and other higher education institutions in this policy environment. If we don't attend to it, what we're doing in the teaching and learning environment may be eroded. And in that regard, we must fight the copyright wars. I wrote an article several years ago called Copyright is Dead, Long Live Copyright. And I argued that the increasing number of international agreements the new laws and legislation in the United States, the court cases, the trade agreements, the increasing focusing on licensing the private law of contract versus the public law of copyright, the digital rights management systems, and the debates in the academy about the ownership of copyright are putting copyright and fair use on a very different and I think very challenged platform. We must participate in the entrepreneurial academy. That is, we need to look at our teaching and learning systems, not only addressing the needs of our own students, but looking at how they can be exported effectively and, and profitably, and that, what I mean covering our costs, into the broader learning communities. How do we leverage our assets? How do we really seek out and create new markets? How do we respond to the financial mandates, the competitive mandates, the prestige mandates of our universities? It means we need development and risk capital. It means we need business planning. And we need cultural firewalls between what we do inside the academy and the type of business enterprises we launch outside the university. We must respond to user expectations. Charles Kuralt, the late newscaster, once noted that thanks to the interstate highway system in the United States, I'm able to travel from the East Coast to the West Coast and see absolutely nothing. 
The IT and the physical infrastructures are necessary but insufficient. Our users, our students, our faculty want more and better content. They want access. They want convenience. They want new capabilities, things they've never been able to do before. We're all seeking to manage our costs, and we're very focused on individual and organizational productivity. How can our teaching and learning systems and capacities respond more rigorously to user expectations? We must be prepared to deal with accountability and assessment. Our institutions have expectations for the work that we're doing in the teaching and learning area. Our government and funding agencies care. Do we have rigorous measures of user satisfaction, market penetration? How do we know that we're being successful, that we have an impact on teaching and learning, that we are effectively using the resources that have been provided to us? Are we designing systems for usability, user-centered, participative, experimental, iterative, user-supportive systems? Or are we developing those systems for ourselves? We must establish a much more rigorous research and development agenda around our teaching and learning work, what the center here at Columbia calls design research. This R&D must enable the creation of new knowledge. It must create a laboratory for experimentation. It serves as a magnet for new skills. It serves as a potential for technology transfer and capitalization. Good R&D supports decision making, it enables organizational risk taking, and it really opens us up as Columbia for much more effective federal foundation and corporate investment. This is a critical capacity that we must develop in much more rigorous ways over the next five to ten years. And my last point is that we must be much more focused on opportunities for collaboration and partnership. Conversations that now take place within our information services arena at Columbia around the libraries, the IT, and the instructional technology organizations. The broader conversations across the higher education community on how we need to work together to build these new learning systems. New communities of practice, new communities of learning, new communities of research. So as you work your way through the day, I wish you a great deal of anxiety. Marshall McLuhan once noted, our age of anxiety is in great part the result of trying to do today's jobs with yesterday's tools. That really defines, in some ways, how we have always behaved in the university. I wish you a great deal of disruption. Clayton Christensen, who was the author of The Innovator's Dilemma, once noted in an interview, one of the litmus tests is that a disruptive technology enables a larger population of less skilled people to do things that historically only an expert could. That defines, in many ways, the technology and the user world that we live and work in. And lastly, I wish you chaos. As Henry Adams said in The Education of Henry Adams, chaos often breeds life when order breeds habit. May your experience today be productive, may it be energizing, and may it be very, very full of life. Thank you.